It's all about how to use a fish finder to locate those fish and to give you a better chance and an opportunity to actually catch them, right? Hey, I'm Michael, the Shots to the Yak, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're a first-time viewer, appreciate you for watching, man. Hopefully, I get you to subscribe by the time this video is all said and done with, right? Hey, if you missed episode one where I explain settings and share with you my personal settings to get the most out of your fish finder, or if you missed episode two where i talk about data overlays how to set them up what they do as well as going over the three most important page types that you should create and keep on your unit you should go check them out man you're going to learn a lot and it's going to lead up into this video so check them out and the links in the description below now where i left off on the previous video talking about the three page types that you should have on your setup what i didn't explain and what we're going to talk about now is under which fishing situations do you use each one of those three so let's go ahead and talk about that now starting with the top right here which is the chart plotter with the 2d sonar it's split at about 70 percent chart plotter with about 30 percent or so with the 2d sonar now under which fishing situation do i find myself using this specific page well it's on big bodies of water when i'm trolling like lake michigan for salmon why is that well because the minute i launch I start a trail and I'm trolling around and anytime I mark bait fish or if I happen to hook into a catch of fish, I'm dropping a waypoint along this trail so that now I can go back and circle around that area where I caught a fish and I have a, a position an area to kind of tighten in and, and focus in on my trolling versus just blindly going all around the water. You only have so much time on the water when you're trolling via a kayak because you're exhausting yourself you know four hours of trolling on the big water is it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of energy so you want to be really efficient so because these fish are plegic they're swimming around they're following bait school uh, schools of bait you're not really looking for structure so much at all right you're just looking for bait balls you're looking to mark fish in the water column so that you can get a better idea you know let's say here on the simulator you got this big uh school coming up at uh 10 foot mark right there you can adjust your lines to get down to that depth if i know a lot if i see a lot of fish on the bottom which could be lake trout could be brown trout i'm gonna go ahead and drop my lines lower to the bottom and really try and target those fish and so that is why i don't need so much space so much screen space for the sonar because by the time those fish are marked on my sonar those i've already passed those fish right so it gives me a chance to oh i see a big school at 12 feet it gives me a chance as i as i pass that school to adjust my lines quickly to hopefully get down to that depth as i'm trolling and again when i hook into a fish if i mark a, if i see a big bait ball of, of of fish i'll go ahead and drop a waypoint and then because I have a trail set up, I've, I've see, I can see where I've been going and I can really fine tune my troll into an area where I'm seeing bait fish, schools of fish, uh, fish in general. And then, of course, when I do hook into one, I'm immediately dropping a waypoint so I can go back in and replicate what I just did to catch that fish in hopes that I'll catch some other ones that are that were in that area, especially if they're kind of schooled up or they're just some in that vicinity. Right. You want to replicate that and that's the most important thing you can do while, while you're trolling is to replicate what worked to catch one fish all right so we're back at the home screen right here now let's talk about page number two and under which fishing situations will i use this one in generally for fish that relate to structure right your bass your walleye and crappie and so on and so forth and more importantly i'm using this at lakes that i'm already familiar with that i'm i've been on uh, i've in fact, even marked waypoints and know a lot of the spots and the structures there already. And so because of that, I don't need so much 2D sonar and down imaging because I already have places marked on my unit for you know GPS waypoints. And so once I launch, I'm, I'm, I need the chart plotter here so I can pull up on these spots and get a position on them and cast to them, right? Because I already know where they're at. And so because of that and because of boat position and uh being able to see your waypoints and your and your marks and all that stuff is more important than actually seeing what's underneath me i'll run this page here you know having the 2d sonar and the down imaging there is more of just like for quick reference um but i'm generally looking at my chart plotter to see you know a waypoint to position on it to get myself orientated that way and that's why i'll use this page 
uh, specifically for lakes that I'm very familiar with or if I have a lot of waypoints marked on it for spots that I've already found, right? Two down, one more to go. Back at the home screen, let's go into the third and final page here where you'll see it's completely different from the first two that you've just seen. Here you see the GPS chart plotter it takes up very little of the screen where you have the bulk of it taken up by the down scan and the side imaging here. Now, full disclaimer, you know, if you don't have side imaging on your unit, it's not a, a deal breaker. This isn't a must have, but if you do have this option, then I do highly recommend setting up a third page in this fashion. Here's why I'm generally using this page when I'm on brand new bodies of water or waters that I haven't fully uh, learned. I haven't fully mapped. I haven't fully, you know, fished because I need to find structure. You know, here's a great example. I got this in simulator mode here. You'll see that just chunks of rock being pulled up here. You know, case in point, I'll stop it right here and, and, and hit the cursor on it. This looks like the beginning. If I move it down right around here, that looks like the beginning uh, of a big rock right there, right? And you can drop waypoints on the front of it. I can pull, go over here, drop a waypoint at the back of it, and we'll clear the cursor and keep on looking around. Oh, look, another big old boulder. Here's the beginning of it, the, the drop on it. You could drop waypoints here. You could drop waypoints at the top of it. In fact, you'll see right about here where I put the cursor, there's a there's a little school right there. Could be crappie, could be uh, uh, bluegills, could be white bass. I don't know. You have to drop down to figure out what it is. So for me, this page is really, 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 really important. Can't stress that enough. Really important when I'm on bodies of water that I, I just don't know. And I need to find out what's underneath the water. I need to find something, you know, structurally uh, where these fish might be gravitating to. And if you look here, this is a really good image here. I'll stop it for a second. Um, try to move my cursor out the way. But you'll see like the chunk rock right here. And you'll actually see these fish kind of, I'll zoom in a little bit more. You see them scroll over. You see them right there stacked up in between these rocks. And this is why I like this setup right here. Really, really useful when you're on unfamiliar water so that you can get in there, spend some time when you get on that water to just kind of uh, go around, look for things. I don't even start fishing until I kind of cover some of the water areas that look kind of interesting to me. I'll follow the contours and I'm looking for stuff. And once I do find stuff like here, good example, Another huge boulder in the water right here. You know, I would look at this. I'd mark it on the on the uh, GPS so that I can go back and fish that. Right. I'd keep on tro I'd keep on trolling around, waiting to find some other pieces of structure to mark those, and then I'd go back and then start casting. Um, and so for me, going back out to the home screen here, those three are very very important that cover all my bases from trolling to structure fishing on, on areas that I'm very familiar with already and I have places marked. And so it's a matter of kayak position and staying on top of these things into going on to brand new bodies of water, which I have no clue where anything is at. And I need to get in there and quickly cover some areas to find stuff, which then I can fish. This covers all three of the basics. After that, you can create other pages here. If you look, you know, the first three that we went over right here on the uh, right sidebar, you see there's two more underneath that. Those are just extras that I'm, I'm uh, toying around with. And uh, as of this recording, Lorance just released the new 4.5 version software for the HDS series units and for the Elite 5 and 7, which now allows you to incorporate an avionic sonar chart live into your uh, graph. And so that's why I'm toying around with these, uh, filling it out. You'll see here on the left, this is the, I'll put the mark cursor right here. This is the Navionics map. Here in the middle, this is the Lorance map. And then finally I have the 2D sonar here. So, you know, these are not necessary. I'm just toying around with them. I want to kind of see what they can do and where this may lead to. But for sure, the first, second, and third page here are really, really key for me. And hopefully this helps you setting things up, gives you a different perspective on things. And of course you have comments, questions about it. You have a, a better way. You have a page you think needs to be set up differently. Let me hear it below in the comments. Hopefully you subscribe, stick around in the next video. We're talking about waypoint management, how I set it up and then how do I fish a waypoint? Thanks for watching y'all.